Welcome to the ICA. My name is Gemma Tortea and I'm the talks programmer here. Um, tonight is the first in a series of three talks that are, we are programming over the next three months alongside the New Contemporaries exhibition, which is starting next Friday. Um, David Thorpe has put these talks together, he's chairing this evening. And we are really happy to have Mark Leckie, Vanessa Jackson, David Thorpe, Margarita Glutzman, and Bruce McLean to discuss the trouble with painting this evening. Please give them a warm welcome. Okay. Well, uh, welcome everybody to the ICA and our discussion tonight, The Trouble with Painting. Just going to start by introducing our four uh, speakers, members of the panel this evening. On my immediate right is Vanessa Jackson. And Vanessa studied at St. Martin's and at the Royal College. She was president of New Contemporaries in 1975 and later head of painting at Winchester School of Art in the 80s and research tutor at the Royal College of Art. Since being a student at St. Martin's, her painting has explored an approach to geometric systems and the democracy of mathematical approaches to art in relation to abstract painting and feminist critical practice. Her paintings have been described as remaining resistant to the new economy, rooted in the discursive rupture of another time and divorced from an era in which the function of art has come to be equated with entertainment and the decoration of capital. She currently teaches painting at the Royal Academy Schools. Next to Vanessa is Mark Leckie, who spends most of his time as an artist scouring the internet for imagery in a kind of dematerialized world. He has said that the idea of presenting objects in a gallery no longer seems appropriate and that most artists are not very clever, nor should we expect them to be. We don't go to an artist for a rigorous analysis of an idea. I want to channel the idea, to get inside it and become the medium. Mark was born in Birkenhead and graduated from Newcastle Polytechnic in 1990. He's exhibited widely in the UK and internationally, was professor of film studies at the Stadel School in Frankfurt, a founding member of the musical collectives Donatella and Jack to Jack, and won the Turner Prize in 2008. On my immediate left is Margarita Glutzberg, who moved to London from Moscow and has lived and worked here since 1979. Her practice ranges from painting and drawing to performance and sound installation to create a visual territory from historical, autobiographical, and literary references. Her recent project, The Captive Bird Society, centered around early recordings of birdsong, generating a wider investigation into the story of phonography and the apparatus of capture. Always interested in the structure of ideas, Margarita has recently begun a series of paintings based on the three Michelin star dishes of Alain Ducasse. Constructed entirely in black, they depict mystical matter, still lives in the tradition of Dutch vanitas paintings. She is research tutor in drawing at the Royal College of Art. On my far left is Bruce McLean, and Bruce works across a wide range of media. In 1969, he publicly declared he was giving up art and established Pose, an experimental performance group. Questioning the nature of art is fundamental to Bruce's practice. During the late 60s and early 70s, he worked with impermanent structured structures and received materials use photography as a medium in itself or as a means to document transient works. He made performances, collaborated on texts, tapes, films and videos. Subsequently, Bruce McLean included painting among his expressive tools and achieved international recognition as a painter. He won the John Moores Prize for painting in 1985 and lectured at the Slade where he became head of graduate painting. So that's our panel for this evening. And we're going to start by considering that contemporary art presents itself in many forms, medias, and styles. But if anything can be claimed to approach a constant, it could be said to be painting. Every few years, audiences are reminding of painting's new spirit or triumph, as if an astonishing discovery has been made, but artists continue to paint. 
Despite advances in the range of media available to artists, painting remains central to art practice. So I'm going to start by asking the question, and then I'm going to pose it to Vanessa Jackson initially, and that is, why do you think artists continue to paint? Okay. Okay, well, I, I probably have to start by saying, curiously, that I don't um, actually just teach painting at the Royal Academy. I teach fine art students, and I, I enjoy that rather better than when I used to just teach painting in brackets at the Royal College, where it was a painting department. So, mm. But why painting goes on actually holding its space and why I think people do still call themselves painters and not just artists um, is that it's still, it's, it's probably, it's a... It's the one space where you are on your own. You're, not you're probably not collaborative. You're thinking in a frame. Um, you're, you're, you've got time to think. You're dwelling in it. You're reflecting in it. Um, and I think it's probably closer to the practice of something like poetry or, dare I say, philosophy um, in what it's wanting to actually B, and I don't mean um, ethical philosophy or th things where there's a sort of perhaps a more major process going on, but I think actually it's just a space of thinking that um, continues to find, be fascinating. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the endless cadaver, but it won't lie down, you know. So, Bruce. Why do artists continue to paint, do you think? You, you, did you return to painting when you started painting, or did you begin painting at that point, after having done all these other things? Um, well, I'm a sculptor. <laughs> and um, I found that most painters were tall, thin men. <laughs> or tall, thin women. But... Um, um, no, I never was a painter, no. I don't, th I don't, I don't think of myself... Because I won the John Moore's painting prize. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a fluke. That was a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I'm a sculptor that sometimes makes stuff with paint. You know, I think... And I, I did return to painting. I, I actually, when I was involved with uh, conceptual art, conceptual art was black and white, and had black frames around it. Well, not all of it, but I'm generalising. But it was a bit like that. And all got a bit kind of... Typewriter and a bit of it. It didn't take long to get a few concepts together, you know, that, that, that was pretty quick. But, so I started making drawings in order to actually to think about things, and um, the drawings have actually, I put a bit of colour on, but they've actually became coloured drawings. And somebody then put me in a painting show, which I didn't refuse, but m I might have done. I think the biggest mistake I made is actually returning to be involved with what is so called art. I think when I was involved with Paul's, it was much more interesting. I think I made a mistake. I actually regret uh, having returned to, to um, having given it up, having returned to it. I think I made the right decision in 1969. I think it was a good decision. And um, I'm think thinking about it again. There's, um, it's a good audience. I'm, I'm not, I'll just say one thing. I met Alistair Warman, who you mean, who, who's now the head of Bime Shaw, who was running the Whitechapel. He was running the, the Serpentine Gallery. And, um, he was walking down the road smoking a cigarette. And I said, I hear you're leaving the Serpentine. He said, yeah. I said, why are you leaving? And he said, well, haven't you heard that song? There's a whole lot of curating going on. <laughs> That's why he left. And I think there's a whole lot of painting going on, a whole lot of art going on. I think, there's, I think painting's quite interesting, but I think there's a lot of art going on now, which isn't necessarily painting. A lot of painting going on, which isn't necessarily art. <laughs> And oh, we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I think Penny is wonderful. OK, we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark Arita, so Bruce was talking about, uh, just then, about conceptual art um, existing in black and white. And you've just embarked on a new body of work consisting of entirely black paintings. So, is that because they're deeply conceptual or not? Well, I mean, I think it's more to do with... Um, the fact that I don't want them to really almost be paintings or something. I mean, again, I'm not really a painter, even though I do use paintings. And Good. this is the other thing, I'm really not a painter, though I'm jealous of painters. And I think maybe that's for something for later, because I'm really jealous of painters. But, um, but the main thing is that I, I kind of think of production, and, so, and kind of production of matter. And, and actually, maybe it is to do with my kind of 
even though I left Russia a long time ago, culturally, I have a lot of sort of um, kind of mental processes that I think belong to that to a tradition that sort of starts around 19, I don't know, in the early 19th century, basically. But I really do like that idea of, of the artist as a kind of producer of material, of matter. And so painting, for me, is a kind of matter, and black matter seems to be just purely um, this kind of just, just black paint, which is a bit like oil or coal or, um, or ink or printed material or the black and white print matter from photocopies. So it just seems a kind of a, a, an easy thing to do. But, but I think it's, I, I'm much more interested in, in painting as a kind of production, I think. What does that mean? Um, just, it, it's another form of production. It's another form of... Um, manifesting something. So maybe when you read about kind of Mark, Mark's thing of channeling an idea, it's a sort of, um, it's a way of channeling something materially that's possibly actually easier than going through um, a technological process of manifesting that idea. So, so it's a kind of cha material channeling of an idea and, it, and it's quite a kind of work-like process. So you become a worker. And, and, you feel, and you feel good about having done a day's work. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and I kind of, you can reward yourself by being a worker. Hmm. And how, how do you reward yourself? Uh, in, in, in many ways. <laughs> what okay. in one? Um. Later, you don't have to do this now. Don't, don't let it touch you with Well, actually, by, by not feeling guilty, by removing some guilt. Mm. So you reward yourself in guiltlessness. Mark, you, you have, you've said in your cybernetic world that you can almost wish an image into existence. Is that right? Uh, Did I get that right? Yeah. There is, there is something in that. Um, Which is a pretty um, interesting thing to have said. So how well, it do you kind, do it? It kind, of, it kind of feels like that to me. Uh, I'm constantly kind of... Um, you know, it, it, it's... It, it, there's almost like this kind of telekinetic process that goes on where I just kind of something I desire I just kind of reach out for mentally and it's it's there it's kind of I can find that kind of imagery or I can find that thing I can find elements of what I need to kind of build it so it's it's and I, I find that really um, confusing you know I find it I find it really um, I'm kind of bedazzled by it it's uh because it's it has this kind of i don't know I, I, what i was trying to describe there is a kind of it's kind of psychedelic it's like the world we live in now is kind of truly psychedelic mm. Mm. and your imaginings are kind of realized and, and manifest and i guess that's the problem i have with painting is that it's i don't really have a problem with painting i have a little, little but if you were to have, what if i was going to have It'd be that that space of the imagination and that and that plasticity, the painting supposedly, you know, that seems to be its its greatest asset, is now, you know, I can find that elsewhere. You know. Mm, but you see, I'm, I would actually that that would be one of my major points was the, the slowness of it would be uh, is the is the fact that you can think within it and the, what you're describing. Although I think it's I can actually I can actually be a little jealous of the fact that you can sort of somehow, you know, kinetically find these things in speed. Um, I actually think if, if that was the truth, that w if that was the, which I think it is, I think in a way you're reflecting society as it is in many ways. It's also the society that we, we have, but also I'm feeling that I'm under great threat in a way. I mean, yeah. Because I think, um, you know, I don't have to watch all the crap that I'm told to watch on television. I mean, I have actually got a choice. So, you know, when people complain about it, you go, well, you don't watch it then. You know, I don't have to look at Facebook or um, answer my emails or... You know, I mean, of course, it's part of the world. We do. You know, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not turning my back on society. I'm not Mondrian with my back to the window. Um, Hans Hesse, I was thinking about him because I read him a bit recently because he wrote a book called Pictures as Arguments, which I thought would be quite pertinent for tonight. But, I mean, we're all, we are all creatures of our society. But in an interesting way, you're a creature reflecting your society in a very direct way. And I think I'm a creature who's actually thinking about it. I mean, I'm thinking, I need, I don't need society to damage me. I need, it, I need to be able to reflect and think and slow it down. I want to spend some time in, yeah. in, that, in that space of 
of, of, of contemplation to I actually guess understand I be, it. I, I don't guess I want to be you know, damaged. Yeah, I don't. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. I don't under, I mean, I'm. I'm. I. You know. I mean. You know. I, I think it's. I think we live that life, and actually, I can make sense of that life, if you like, in the studio by by sort of looking at it, slowing it down. So yeah, curious, that's um, that's that's kind of a bit. I mean, I understand that. I do understand it, but it's kind of the problem I have a little bit. Mm. Is that. It's that kind of slow food kind mm. of analogy. Yeah, yeah. There's a kind of... I wrote something called slow painting. Yeah. Before slow food was and even this, written. This, yeah. this seems to be the kind of main argument now for painting, that it's, it's slow. Mm. Oh, it's not no, with, it's it's not with, it's it's not with those two, though. I mean, Bruce's painting... No, but it sort of it's 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 stands outside the flow. You know, it stands outside this. The problem with the word painting, I mean, the most interesting stuff that's been made, and it's since I've been around... Uh, has been made with, by, by sculpt, people who trained as sculptors. Conceptual art came out of sculpture. It didn't come out of painting. Painting is somebody applying stuff, painting. You know, and, and, and it's, uh, it's about applying paint. And I mean, you can make things that are extraordinary kind of things. And you can go to a space and work with stuff that isn't necessarily paint. There's also things you can use. And I think that, I think that what I've re been reflecting a lot lately... <coughs> Um, and l looking at stuff from the 60s, before conceptual art, there's a lot of coloured sculpture going on, and, and when I went to St Martin's, there's a lot of odd things which seem to get heaved away rather quickly with, with, the, with the advent of the, the student revolution and so on and so forth. And, then, oh, and, and things have they've been moving so quickly, there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been done yet. Things haven't really been pushed to the limits yet, and, and um, I'm at the moment producing a book of some stuff that's been made over the last eight years, and there's some quite interesting things in it, and it's not all made with paint, although these, some of these students, or, or artists, are, are, are in the painting area, whatever that means. Well, there's, that no, might there's no requirement to actually use paint, and the paint, I mean, you can sit down, and it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of market, it's market driven, this return to painting. Mm. I mean, people can't cope with difficult things. People can't cope with things they can't cope with. But before you so get into this, this is true, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of Hercule Poirot unraveling of what it all means kind of mentality going on. What it, oh, I, oh, oh. But when people, you, I just want to look at things and be confounded by it. Must, like, what the buggeration is that? <laughs> and that's when it becomes interesting, you know. But it's all, it's like, oh, listen. It's the saturation of it and the Thatcherism of it. All, it's all to do with this. It's, the minute conceptual art started, I'm old enough to remember because I was involved with it. The minute that started, the galleries were closing down. Hit, hit, hooray. But as soon as they were closing down, they had to open up again because, they, you know, it was... It, it, so when when you were painting, were you were you making sculptures? Is that yeah. What you were doing? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I think as a sculptor, I was the the drawings were drawings for sculptures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving sculptures, if you like, dances or, I, yeah. or, or 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 actions or performances. And, and then I made a show, a huge show in in, in the Kunsthal Bern, not Bern, um, Basel, whatever. And the bloke, after three days, he said, you know. Christ, I've got this all wrong. You're not a painter. I said, no, I never said I was a painter. <laughs> he's trying to hide the work like a painting show. It was just a bunch of huge drawings. Mm. But I think, I think that's, I, I think, all right, that's, that's kind of my issues. I think, I think sculpture, the expanded field of sculpture, yeah. is, is kind of where it's at. Well, well, that's that's been, can I, I think that includes... Can I just include everything? That you all come on January the 19th when uh, we have a talk called The Trouble with Sculpture. <laughs> so we can deal with all that. No it's not the trouble with sculpture. They are the same on the new things. Let me tell you here and there. You were going to take issue about painting being a slow discipline. No, I mean, I, I actually was just an aside, but I, I, I just think that in terms of production and its, and its speed of production, and I, I was more interested in asking about that whole commodity thing, which is, of course... I don't, I don't know how, maybe it's a boring thing to pick up, but I actually find it impossible to not pick up, which is the, the actual existence of the painting as, as a commodity, because actually to produce loads and loads of m paintings, yeah. and they're really expensive, you know, to make. Um, but to, don't necessarily sell them, that's the difference. You know, and to, to kind of stack up, and, and, and it's quite a kind of perverse, it's quite a, a, a uh, what's the word, it, it's... Um, 
You know, it's Contrary. kind of it's it's quite a debauched sort of activity, and it's quite uh, yeah. is that the word you really mean? No, it's not. Try again. Check it out. <laughs> no, not debauched. Um, I don't know. Indul- indulgent, maybe not indulgent, but there is an accumulation of, of kind of matter in the studio, and so therefore it has to be a commodity. Which is, I think, making a film is a bit like writing. I mean, you can write on. Just even in the term, in terms of how solid the object is and what you do. With I like the a object. shadow on the wall better than a, a, a thing like that. But uh, can, can I just say something? It's just coming to my head. Mm-hmm. The last thing I saw, which excited me, painting that excited me, which actually was sculpture, was at the Van Gogh show at um, the Royal Academy. Mm-hmm. I thought that's 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 pretty good, and that's like psychedelic. It's beyond. I mean, I don't yeah. know what that must have looked like when he did it, but I mean, it looks pretty damn good now. Yeah. And it's lumps of stuff. It's not, not all that scrambling, scrambling, blutering and scooshing that all, the, and all, that, all that stuff that painters no, do. It's just lumps of colours stuck on a thing like that. And it's just... But I think, don't you think that this is whole thing is then becomes about which language you operate in and, and, and whether you can actually ever operate in a singular yeah, language. And I think that's where the idea of why I'm jealous sometimes of those who can operate in you want a singular to be de- language. You just want to spend your time being debauched, is that? Well, not de- but it's quite, um, it's not the word I was looking for, I used the wrong word. Yeah, I know. Oh, Vanessa, you're, you're well, I'm, I mean, I knew this was going to happen because I could have said it and the, there are a lot of but people here that know. Language, you operate I am the one with the singular language, language and um, I've only your... ever made any money as a painter out of commissions for wall paintings, which only last for three months, five weeks, whatever, whatever. So... But you're right insofar as the commercial relationship to it. I mean, Freeze Art Fair this year was 99.9% painting, I should think. Yeah, but you shouldn't waste your time and, things like that. Either. And that's really, that's not good for it. That's not good for it. But that's no need, that's a tear of And it. why is it not yeah. good for it? Because it's, because it's, it, 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 I don't want painting to be the only art. I don't want, I, I'm, I enjoy, I want the... A bigger relationship. I want you know, a conversation, it's, it's, it's and I think it, it's bad for it because I think it actually is echoing exactly what sort of Bruce is, is getting at, which is this this thing that you know people somehow think they want, and and they actually basically they don't want it for any other reason that it's you know that it's 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 got value that maybe gold has, but certainly sh- stocks and shares have lost. So it's got another. It's just not in the. It's, it's just but playing it's, games with the you know with the sorry, world. But so. it's not it's not just painting that has that anymore. No, anyway, no, no, you can't no. you can't accuse painting no, of that it, anymore. But I the mean, conceptual, you know. <coughs> you know it's a easy, or a yeah. solar wick goes as much as like you mm. know, an, an average good painting. So it's kind of no, but I think the art fair business is pretty much doing that right now. That's what that's with the paintings. With painting, with painting. Yeah, but not all, not all painting sells, does it? Like you said. No, I've got, a, I've got a quote here from Donald Cuspit, which I've been <laughs> longing to read out, which I'm going to take the opportunity of doing now because it's so great in my view. He wrote about um, ten years ago, maybe. It says, a painting has become the commodity par excellence, a venal symbol of the commercial degradation of art. The more sublime and autonomous a painting, the more readily the wealthy buy it, reducing it to pure wall decoration. It is elitist entertainment, a status symbol, an investment property, everything except the sacred object it purports to be. But that's why it's interesting, so that's why I like it. Come on, man. No, but, uh, that, that's yeah. it. You know, that, that's why I think it, because it is, it can be really like that. And there, and when you kind of engage with that to some degree, it becomes kind of quite fantastic in the same way as a bit of, I don't know, it can be quite fantastic in the same way as a desirable chair is. You know, I don't, but it's to do with a kind of unique desirable object, which is partly to do with the history of commodity and the history of kind of um, the desirable you know, it's, it's the kind of ultimate haute couture because there's only one. That's why you call it a product, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See, I wouldn't call it a product. I'd call it a process. <coughs> I mean, it, and it, the process is the thing that is your, you're in, in the doing of. And, well, I mean, if it, if it has a life outside of the studio, um, I, couldn't, I wouldn't sort of purport to kind of have any... You know, in the end, the ownership is gone. Mm. But, you're, but if you have something which is a product, you're in charge of its stylistic um, future. Like, as if it was a brand. You know. See, this is... I, I don't quite understand this idea, because this, this seems to be the idea of painting now, that it's a, it, that it's a process. It's no longer, it's, it's no longer like, a, 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 you know, a unique object, a product, but it's, it's the process of painting that's interesting, and it's kind of like... Um, have you got now, like, Wade Dyson? 
it's that kind of Christopher Wall school of painting, but it's just it's in the process. And but I don't I don't quite understand what that means. Like it's somehow something's incomplete. But like Wade Guyton sells for like you know he's just gone on. He's just been in one of the big auctions now yeah. and just goes up with all the rest of them. And I don't understand this idea that that, that somehow what he's doing is 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 because. I mean, I think that's, that's where painting, I, that's where I see painting being at the moment, is that kind of school, that kind of Wade Guyton school, which is something about an image and a kind of, and an object and a kind of anxiety between the yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. And a kind of process. But I, I still, I don't really get it in the end. I don't get why that process somehow makes that more interesting I, or, ch or changes I don't, painting. I'm, I'm not going to stand for it as being more interesting. I'm not on that, on that one. I don't think it's more interesting than other, than, other, than other practices. I think it's just as conceptual as other practices, but I don't think it's any more interesting. But I think because of the ways in which it's made, I mean, obviously, there are lots of ways in which you can make a painting. You, know, you, could, you, you could find an image like that, put it on very quickly. But I think because it's this sort of, still has this sense of histories that go with it, that it's usually on something which is a container. And so whatever happens within that is a time for speculation, to put it broadly. I think it's, I think the, the I think why I would call it a process in a way that has time element in it is because it does take time to make, to, to, to make sense of that thing, to work that thing out, which is actually when you're presumably the, the the idea would be that the audience is also having to go through that speculative time or some of that speculative time to actually work out what it is and how it's working, how it's functioning. It it isn't time going through space in the, in a filmic way. Yeah. Um, and but it has got some particular. That's why I think the process is quite pertinent to it. And I know it's it's completely different. I'm completely different to to Gary Hume. Or I'm different. You know, I'm not saying that we're all in the same bracket at all right. but I think there are I think the I think the kind of the, the thing that is the, the the making of it is actually the way it also is to be seen I'm not sure whether that's always the case with every other practice that how important that is or how important it is to see that right Import, I'm sure it's important it's obviously important to a filmmaker um, but how, how how much of that is to be taken on board when you're in the world of film or in the world of object yeah, I think in, in sculpture it's part of it, isn't it? Sculpture is always part of the. But it's process, in your, but it? it's in your real space now. It is your reality. Okay. I don't know. I mean, we can get into great depths and philosophical talking. A process in sculpture, as opposed to process in painting, or is it all the same thing? No, I mean, it's, 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 we could, you, maybe you could talk about the painting you did underwater. <laughs> yes. My underwater painting. Yeah, yeah. your underwater painting. Well, I made the one. It was an underwater watercolour in a fast-flowing stream. It was very hard for the paint to stick on the paper because it wasn't quickly. <laughs> but the, the action was more interesting. The action was more important than, um, than what, I, what I actually did. What, what, what I actually was left with. I don't really, really, really anything. But I'm, I'm thinking about sculpture more and more now. But the problem with sculpture is that, I mean, a painting, you can make a painting, if it's a painting on canvas, you can put it and stick it on a wall, that's pretty simple, stick it under the, But sculpture, which tended to be three-dimensional, um, hasn't been for a long time, that's uh, it's a bit, a bit more problematic, but I've just actually found a new way through. I've had a, I've had a bit of a breakthrough, actually. And, uh, <laughs> no, I, I have, actually. I, no, I actually have. Tell us about it, Bruce. Yes. Uh, well... <laughs> It's to do with the photograph, really. I mean, we're all sick and tired of the photograph or the painting and the painting of the photograph or the photograph of the sculpture, the painting. Uh, but it, I, I, you know, I was looking at a book of, of uh, photographs of some sculpture, and I thought, ah, that's it. I've got it. I've actually now made, I've made one. It's quite a big photograph of somebody else's sculpture, but it's my sculpture. But it's actually it's the way to deal with it, the way to deal with it. But what I actually ends up. It, what I'm trying to get, I suppose I'm trying to say that's a roundabout way. Paint, just go back to paint. I've been making a lot of paintings. The thing about making paintings or trying to make paintings with oil paint on canvas, and I've been doing a lot in the last year and a half, it, it, it frees, it kind of frees my mind 
brings me to think of other things. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Well, that's it's, exactly it's, right. It's a way that's, of, actually, you know, I'm not trying to make a commodity. I'm trying to make some sense of something. Yeah. And I'm trying to make some sense of it with there's lumps of bloody paint and then it's coming around, gold brushes yeah. on this stuff. It's, so that's there. But while I'm doing that, I've been looking at these books of photographs and sculpture books. Like, there's a sculptural porn almost like that. Look at these books. And um, I've, I've come up with a bit of a, I thought about something because I've re re relaxed into something else. It's a, it's a strategy to find a way of going forward. But I'm actually quite obsessed with all the things that which I remember which haven't been made by, not just me, by other people. There's a lot of artists out there still, quite old some of them, that have not made the work that they should have made. Can you name in my some? opinion. Can you name some? Go on. No, 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 that's going to be unkind. But, um, well, I could name, no, I won't, no. <laughs> no, there's a lot. But they haven't made the work because they've kind of moved through what they're doing so quickly or got stuck with one thing. Yeah. What I can't understand mm. is the kind of notion, you get your hit record, which is fair enough, and I've had a couple. I can't remember what they are now, so, but, uh, but they, they, I don't want to keep doing that. But on the other hand, Maybe I will, because I actually never got through. Do you mm. know what I mean? I never mm. pro developed you never through the process. No, yeah. I didn't develop. I didn't go through the other side. I kind of stopped under something else, because something else took my fancy, perhaps. This debauched studio. Where was it? <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is, what, what, sorry, what yeah. happened to the watercolor, the underwater watercolor? Well. Um, did it go in a frame? Did it get sold? No, no. It was uh, somebody, uh, somebody photographed me doing it. <laughs> somebody documented the activity. I didn't ask them to do that. They did it, and there's a photograph of it happening. But no, no. The paper was thrown away, and the uh, paint went down the stream. And what year was that? When did you do 67. that? Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. And that's because you wanted to like dematerialise painting. Yeah. Uh, it, was, so it, was, it was a comment on, about. It was actually a comment on uh, people photographing the landscape, and, and you know, yeah. which seemed the same as painting the landscape. Only it was photographing. It. People were photographing the landscape before some of the people who called themselves sculptors were photographing the landscape. So it was kind of a comment on that. But, yeah. but it's a, it's difficult to keep making comments, and people can't work out what the fuck you're doing. And I mean, I can't work out what the hell I'm doing half the time anyway either. So it's all a bit of a muddle, really. But well, I'm <laughs> but I'm really interested in that idea of having a parallel activity and what painting allows you to do, which is to think about other stuff yeah. while doing it. So it's a bit like kind of doing sport or something, or swimming, or yeah. it, or, or it's kind of it really is a proper practice. So while you're practicing something, like sort of doing skipping, or, yeah. that you can think about other stuff because it has the discipline. You have to be very disciplined and in some way. Yeah. And, and therefore you can think about that stuff. So that idea of parallel thinking and parallel making and kind of parallel production, I think, is really crucial. So this is where I'm really also interested in Vanessa's thing, which is that, um, and I'm a parallel producer, but you're a singular yeah, producer. Yeah, the first one I've never met. Parallel producer. <laughs> PV. <laughs> so you regard yourself as a singular producer. But no, I, I mean, I am. So what that means? Yeah. Because that yeah. means, what are you thinking about well, that, when you're I mean, making? Unlike swimming. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. what, are you, what are you thinking about? Because yeah. I'm thinking about all the other stuff I should be maybe doing while painting. No, no, I'm, well, I'm, 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 I'm probably not. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, compared to swimming, which I do... Um, I once a week, rather, you know, rather in a rather kind of I should because I still smoke kind of way, um, is um, is is actually that's no, incredibly boring. I can't think at all. In, the the, the, the but thinking, but thinking, thinking in terms of painting, I think. I mean, I think, and I think this is problematic, perhaps, but it's where I am. Is that in the process of painting, um, I'm also I'm. I'm in the history of painting. I mean, I mean, it's histories, and that doesn't exclude architecture or, or film or other things that, or you know, other things that come into into mind. It doesn't also exclude um, hearing the news and the world that is happening out there. But I actually, I'm, I'm actually trying to kind of clarify those thoughts. That's what I would say. That's maybe, the manifestation, if you like. Maybe it is actually, I'm kind of wrong, maybe it is actually while painting and it is, a comp it is also a rest from thinking about the other things, though they do creep in, I mean, for me. Well, it's, it I certainly wouldn't be, I mean, certainly, um, I, I, you know, I, can, I can't actually go to the studio until I've kind of done the washing up. So I want that out of the way. I mean, I don't want every it's all day. I don't want Radio Four, though. Isn't yeah, no, yeah. You know I mean? well, I know, but I don't want. But that's what I mean. I don't. I don't want the every day. Exactly. 
but I want something. I want something that's going to, you know, be a bit, be, be a bit, yeah, bit yeah, more, yeah. Sort of, a bit tougher. And that the trouble is, that's the, then that's the, then you're in the process of the doing of it, um, which, which, you know, it isn't. It is thinking. It's the, you know, people don't not think when they're making work, whether you're drawing, painting, or you know, what are you thinking about when you're making a drawing? I, I, what I'd like to do, I'd like to return to this. Uh, radio 4. Well, no, not no, Radio Four. No, no, exactly. No, I think the world of psychedelia is what I think, um, yeah. because I am old enough to the remember speed. the psychedelia when it was, you know, in its. Uh, uh, it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I, I remember it as actually being quite a contemplative uh, undertaking, but you seem to refer to it as. Um, <laughs> Something that's very speedy and sort of all yeah. we want, we want different drugs. And, different, and there were different, different drugs. No, not not speedy, but just just I, I mean it literally. All right, psychedelic literally means mind manifesting. That's that's what it means, psyche. And um, and it's it's that. It's just it's it it's the kind of confusion between that I have between my, my thoughts and, and, and them being realised on a, on a screen, you know. That's kind of what I mean by psychedelic. Because mm. I, I, I can't differentiate, you know. And, um, and I just think that puts us in a whole other world. And I think, I mean, I understand everything that you're, that you're saying and I'm, 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 you know, I'm not uh, unsympathetic to it in any way. I just think, I just wonder where the engagement is, do you know what I mean? Because if the engagement's just with yourself and with your own kind of space, your own self... No, I don't think it is. I mean, I'm not... I'm, I mean, I did, that sounded like that, but I think it actually isn't. It isn't, because you're in... Because you're... you're I mean, I, that's why I talk about art histories. Yeah. There are a lot of them. And it's not... It's an engagement with the practice itself. But I think that also... As, you know. That also becomes a... Because pro- it's that, isn't it? It's just you in your space with Radio 4 on, and then, and then, and then art... <laughs> This, is, well, this isn't you, this is what everyone does. Everyone does this. So but I'm, our I'm histories not... are pretty damn big, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but our hi- yeah, but it's just... It's history, just, it's just that. Is, no, but it, I mean, I'd say it was know. more just our history itself. What, what does that... Well, yeah. that's... And you get this kind of, you know, most... If I go... Ah, no, that's unfair. I was going to say if I go and look at a, a... I went to that Sachi show that's on at the moment. I mean, that's not, you know, it's not a good show. There's a lot of painting in it. But you see there, it's just this kind of accretion of kind of art histories that are kind of built up on these... Ca- or, or actually, they're not built up, they're kind of knocked back. It's like, it's very timid, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's very tenuous, like the marks and everything's mm. kind of like... Everything's sunk in, everything's kind of like a palimpest or a... Mm. I never get that word right. Or a ghost, you know what I mean? Everything's kind of ghostly. Well, that could be... But it, it's, yeah. that, it's that kind of like everyone's... Uh, painting's kind of haunted by its past, you know, it's paint... It's haunted by well, that's what, kinda... people, that's what people say, but those some people actually quite like it. I know because like that, that. this seems I to mean, be the argument yeah. now that it, that actually all these things you can just be paintings just being perverse, but it's not. I don't I don't see that painting is in any way perverse. I don't I don't understand that as an argument. It's not you know it it it's. But it's is it, when I painting when I, painting's mm. the good son, you know, it does its duty. Yeah, well, that, 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 Sorry, I've had that's, a glass of wine that's now. Right. No, that's I'm quite off. fine. I'm going to try and get up to that one. I mean, I don't. I'll take it. I'll take it on. I mean, I think. It, I think it's. Um, when I think I'm, when I say art histories, I'm really am meaning histories. I mean, there is there are huge territories. I think what you're talking about is the problem where the appearance of those things can just be stylistic, and that's kind of boring. You know, right. where it's just literally you take it off the top, and it's an appearance of that stuff. You know, but it, if you're actually really interested in the histories of it. It's 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 the world. It's not just the art. It's where the art comes from. It's how the art's found in that place, and it's it's back and forth and to and from, and it's as many places as you can possibly go to find it. And I'd say that about fiction. I say that about poetry. Yeah. Which is why I bought them in in the first place. I say it about film. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I know, I, none of us are kind of so confident that we can actually talk about it. So, you know, the, the kind of whole range of subjects and such a sort of in depth but I think that's what you actually can give yourself the time to do if you're in the practice of doing so you know if you're in the practice of painting that's what I'm interested in I'm interested in its you know its massiveness not not just you know me and then what came first and what came before that um you know that and that's why I would jump down the throat of Bruce when he kind of would sort of talk about pa- talk about painting not being not being um um 
conceptual, because that was when I was a 70s student. You were the, you were the 60s, I was the 70s or whatever. God, you look older than me, but there you go. Um, it's, um, it's, 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 you know, it's actually, that was the point where it got really, it got very tough, because there were a lot of arguments about all that stuff. But they were good arguments. Mm. There were good arguments about, you know, your conceptual, I'm not, you know, they were kind of, you know, because Sooth was in there in the middle of it, and minimalism was crashing this way and that way. But there's little argument arguments. now, is there? Well, I think there should be more, and I like well, having that. Right no, well, anyway. I think there should be. There, 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 yeah. There's necessary for something to bloody happen, and I, 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 I'm afraid I'm not to make it happen. <laughs> what were you going to say, Margaret? Because nobody else seems to. I mean, there's so much hasn't been done yet. Uh, there's a lot of painting. Uh, there's, there's a lot of painting I'd like to see that I haven't seen that I want to see. Actual paint on surfaces I want to see, apart from anything else with other stuff as well, and it hasn't been done yet. I want to see it. But I'm quite, uh... Soon. <laughs> I'm serious. But can't it just be kind of, you know, virtually realised? But... In your, in your mind, in your... Or, well, or you... it kind of is, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. It sounds good. Is that, and is that not <laughs> enough? Do you think it is enough? What is? For it to be virtually realised. Well, I, I, I don't know. I was trying to be a bit clever. Oh. I was just thinking of that, that psychedelic manifestation that actually now maybe you don't need to. I'm actually. getting a What's bit. What's this I'm argument that you don't? It, it, I'm really quite interested about the argument. It's always good to have an argument. What? That there isn't an argument. Because we, we, well, we, we all thing. started off, didn't we? Going the trouble. The I trouble is painting. Is is there isn't one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know there isn't really one. It's like if you want to paint, fine. Go go ahead and paint. It's okay. But what you were picking up on the Sartre thing, and I think that's really important, is that actually, I th and I've got to be careful because there are lots of people in it who are lovely people in it. Um, no, there's some good the paintings there. there. Sorry, yeah. I should no, say. No, I will say that too. Um, but I think actually there is, a, there is something which is very much... I mean, I think there is a real stylistic problem. That's what I... And I think that is when you kind of can just see exactly where somebody's sort of plugged in and plugged out. And then that gets... That is really very slight. So you don't actually get any sort of sense of anything deeper that you want to actually spend time with. Yeah. And I think, that's the, I think that's the appearance, and I think that happens with all of us, I mean, in all practices. There's this, I think you can, I'm sure there are films that have the appearance of film that aren't as good as some films, because they're just the, sort of, just the veneer, rather than something which has had yeah. consideration. I guess, it's when I, I guess it's when I see the energies being invested in making paintings that aren't energetic yeah, yeah, yeah. that, I, that I, I, I wish people would do something else. Yeah, I know. think I do too. And actually, I'd have to say that in the, he in the heyday of the conceptual sort of push that came around in the 70s when painting was, you know, first time in my lifetime it had died. Yeah. I think it had died a few times before that, but my first period of death um, was, um, was actually it was, a, it was a fantastic relief because actually um, a lot of what I was really bored, of, bored with, which was the kind of lyrical abstraction that was going on, that all my teachers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, disappeared, and a lot of painting, you know, painters, a lot of painters stopped, which is great. Yeah. Because there's far too much bad crap around. But you I need think, a cull. Yeah, you need a cull occasionally. Yeah. yeah. But I think that idea of stopping and starting and returning is quite interesting, actually, because I think it's really one thing that is quite annoying about painting, and I find it really irritating. Oh, is good, that, good, good. No, it's just personally, is that it's really hard to show painting with other bits of stuff. I mean, you can, yeah. but it's quite hard to show it, but, you know, because it, it kind of operates in this register that people... And I don't find it hard, but I, kind of people find it hard to read because it's still, you know, there's a sort of weird thing of of, well, you operate in this register, and it doesn't work, it works with, you know, you can kind of have an object and a film and a thing and another thing and, a, and something <coughs> else. And kind of as soon as you introduce a painting into that kind of territory, it either becomes a meta object, like you made it, because it's like, this is a painting, and it, it's almost kind of a, not cynical, but it's a kind of conceptual move that you've put a painting up. It certainly can be real. It's, it's, and I think that's, that's really strange that it operates in a completely different register. And I've talked about that with kind of students of mine who I know are here. But it's really, um, I find that kind of weird. And I don't know if that's mm. if but it's equally, true. Equally or equally <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I find it odd that you go to well, show us him tonight. I've been to one or two before I came here. And he, there's lots of paintings on the wall. And I've been, put shows of lots of paintings on the wall. But actually, if I'm making a painting, I'm making, actually I make four at a time. So I'm looking at four. 
So I could put four on the wall, but ideally there'll be one that's any good. And I don't want to sit and look at one. And I think people should sit and look at the things as long as it takes the bugger who painted it to paint the thing. Because, you know, if people go, oh, right, next. You know, they'll look at films for periods of time or, or, or other things like that. But they won't look at paintings. For, I mean, I think, I think we need another place to put these things. Mm -hmm. well, that's and what it, you were saying before about process. It doesn't have to be the Royal Academy, or it doesn't have to be the ICA. It doesn't have, it have to be a space which, which is suitable for the particular thing that the particular artist is doing, or painter is doing. And that, that's, that's a, it all gets a bit sloppy. Everyone makes all this stuff, and I'm struggling with this stuff, and then it all ends up in a... In a white cube. I mean, a white cube. That's not cynical, is it? I mean, is that a joke? Or something? Is, that, is it called a white cube as a joke? <laughs> is, I mean, is it? I don't it know. I, I don't know because it, you, that's what we all aspired to in the sixties before we went conceptual was to make the sculpture for a kind of beautiful, pristine place that didn't exist. Well, the Casman Gallery did exist like that, but that was the only one. I think it's a bit ironic. And, 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 yeah, that's gone. Nobody they don't remember the Casman. White know? Cube's gone, has it? Mm? No, the Casman. Oh, really? <laughs> but your work, Mark, I mean, what's its relationship as far as it, its display is concerned? And well, I was also, trying to think then what, what um, you asked before about... Who asked about an argument? What was the yes, argument? That's the argument, yeah. Well, I guess, I guess the argument is like an old 60s argument, which, mm. is, which is the argument of, of, of dematerialisation, mm. isn't it? Mm. Which to me now seems like a possibility. You know, it, there's 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 the technology, there's the kind of tools to kind of truly disperse and dematerialise art, and that that is that seems to be an argument that's worth having to me. And but how do you dematerialise it? By properly? stopping painting. Why, why just painting? Why not sculpture? Because what, paintings, you know, painting? paintings. The object. That would be, be a start. Because I, because I think, because I think actually, you can expand the field of sculpture to include the kind of virtual. You can yeah. sculpt, sculpture can move into those spaces. You can mm. think about those spaces sculpturally. It's not a problem. Painting, it's 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 the the things that can happen on a screen that happen on a. It's paintings. You know, it's paintings. Idea as an object that becomes a problem. I think that's what I'm trying Does to say. Does a virtual thing mm. have to happen on a screen? Does what? Does a virtual thing have to happen on a screen? No, it doesn't. No. No, I mean, no but it can, it, you know, it can extend into, yeah. into all sorts of spaces. If the technology it? comes along, because right now the technology is not there. I mean, the technology that comes along with cinema, where there's lots of virtual in it, you can still see the joins, and it's still not very good. I mean, the kind of the relationship between, between um, the real... Um, and then what is virtual? I mean, you, you know, it's, it's getting better year by year, but you actually would have a real difficulty, I think, in sort of understanding how something like a, the difference between a Magritte painting and, I'm trying to think, and to possibly, I mentioned it before, and, um, the kind of the, the, the actual physicality that is actually on the surface. Magritte's this very, very, you know, he reproduces too well. Right. You can see it like that. But actually, or um, Edward Hop um, Hopper, I'm trying to think of artists that actually, they reproduce so well that you get the image straight away, no problem at all. If, if, but if, actually, if it reproduces it's a very... well, it's bad. Yeah, that's if, exactly you it. You can't actually that's photograph exactly something which yeah. is, you can't photograph really good work. It's unphotographable. Yeah. You cannot actually do it. Um, yeah. You can make a photograph that looks a bit like it, but you can't actually get it. Mm. If it's really something else, you've got to be there. Well, it's, there's a, it might be there's something in your head, or it might be a dance. It might not have to be mm, a painting. Mm. But you can't photograph a, a decent... I've never seen a decent photograph of a Bonnard or a Monet. But you, also, you, you just said that the, you know, the virtual isn't there yet. It's not there yet. Not, well, not for that kind of quality. But, not what, for but that why are we waiting for the virtual to kind of take place before we... Well, catch we, up with it but we all, as, as artists. So, I mean, we should be, we should be at the cutting edge of the virtual, you I, mean? I kind yeah. of believe, yeah, but I believe so. Not in a kind of, you know, ICA media, mm. no, but, you know, but the ICA was kind of in the 90s. But, it, yeah, I, I do believe that. But the interesting thing about painting as a pictorial form, as a kind of language, is that it seems to, and again, I'm not in agreement with it, this is just an observation, it seems to um, have a kind of territory, a bit like writing and language itself in a kind of tradition or whatever that means, form, is that there are painters who would claim to be exploring the virtual, you know, through painting in the same way that you would write an essay. So in a sense, 
it can it seems to be able to embrace a kind of discourse or a philosophical position without leaving itself. So that's and again that's an observation, it's not something I'm kind of proposing. But I think that's maybe why it remains, because all the things that we've kind of been discussing, one could say certain artists who paint deal with. You kind of deal I'm dealing with materialization through making a painting. Yeah. So it becomes like a, a, a kind of, maybe what you said about philosophy, it becomes mm. sort of like a kind of essay writing form within itself and, and persists. And whether, maybe that there's time to sort of stop. I don't know, maybe, it, but, but people don't seem to stop. Right. They still use it in the same way sentences are constructed still, even though you had like, you know, burrows. People still sort of mm. seem to be not cutting things up. Yeah. Or, but, well, they're beginning to. Yeah, yeah, in a, yeah, maybe they are a bit, but not. Let's just pretend there's one observation I wanted to make, which you might, which we have touched on. But I think it's true to say that uh, there are no moving image works in the Saatchi collection. Is there what? Yeah, he doesn't no, buy no video or moving, moving image works very old. in in Saatchi's collection. And it makes me wonder about this whole business of painting and sculpture being marketable commodities that are very much more easy to uh, use as means of transaction in, in a way that the more virtual things are not. And I, I wonder if there's a kind of ethical basis for artists to consider that kind of thing. When, when you're talking about dematerialization hmm. and the virtual world and the whole sort of cybernetic Tradition. Actually, there's a whole thing around history in cybernetics as well. Which I mean, that, that's when, when you're when you're thinking cybernetically, hmm. are you thinking about the history of, of cybernetics or yeah. the histories in in the way that Vanessa might be history, thinking about the histories of painting? Yeah. Well, I'd, I mean, I kind of I'd, I'd include it. Yeah. I mean, the ICA did a kind of seminal yeah, cybernetics show back in '69, mm, '68, yeah. didn't yeah. they? Cybernetics mm. Serendipity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of I'm aware of those kind of history I mean they're not that interesting you know mm. but um, in terms of ethical I mean I, it's kind of like a, I don't know I always see it just as a it's a kind of pay structure you know and the pay structure begins at the top with the, the paintings and then kind of trickles down and you know, video is always trying to kind of place itself in relationship to what painting demands you know <coughs> You can't ask as much as a painting, but you can kind of approach it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's an addition, it's not unique like a painting. So you're always in relationship to like, in terms of what it's worth, its value, to painting, mm. which is like the gold standard, which you kind of mm. said at the beginning. Mm. Well, that, I mean, I think, that, I think that's the, I mean, I'm critical of that too. I haven't got any, you know, but there's also the other side of it, which is as a painter, you, you, you wouldn't bother to apply for any kind of grant. You wouldn't get one. No. <laughs> and and I, that's not because, would I. But that's not because you're making a fortune out of it. It's because there's, you can't write a big enough blurb to, to actually kind of say why you need this, this, and this, and this. Right. I mean, you know, I'm being, I'm being really blasé here, but, you know, in educational terms, in AHRC or whatever it is, you couldn't just say, I need six months to go away and paint. Um, it wouldn't, it doesn't work. But if you actually wrote a great big kind of technological reason why, you'd be researching something. Right. You know, and if you mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm into cyberspace, you know, you know what I mean? It would, that, yeah, would, yeah. that would press the right buttons. So there, is a, there were two, there were so many different layers of, you know. Well, you were saying, Margarita, <coughs> that you actually quite like this idea of the uh, glamorous commodity. But that's important. And you think about that when you're making your painting. Uh, I'm... <coughs> yeah, I mean, not so directly, but I suppose I can't... Yeah, I, I, I suppose I can't quite um, forget that ever, you know, that, that, that kind of... But that's to do with the sort of interest I have within culture and, and the world that I look at. So a painting becomes another object of production. So in a way, the, the kind of the, the things I employ in producing it um, are thoughts which are connected to that idea of kind of a desirable thing. So that becomes part of 
the kind of the production method that goes on in my head. So I'm not sure if I'm thinking about it fictionally or not. Or I certainly like to turn production and value into a kind of fiction that becomes also the subject of the work. So it's a, it's a kind of fictional engagement with that territory, probably, rather than a real one. And, I mean, it becomes real by, the fact, by its manifestation, but it's nevertheless still a kind of almost fictional um, engagement. But I think you can't get away from it that you're making this solid matter and what to do with it. Okay. Well, we've reached that point in the evening where we will open up um, for questions. But just before we do that, I'd like you, Bruce, if maybe you could just conclude this part of the evening by telling us why um, you think it's a good idea not to make art. <laughs> I think you. I think you can. I think I. Ne I can't understand what's going on now. And um, you turn on the television, isn't there? And say, oh, my my art. Um, is about my new art. My my. It's all my new art. You think I'll be the judge of that? Hang on. Or you might be. Or it, they might see this film I've made, or this poem I've written, or this piece of whatever. It's all this art, and I, I'm going to get pissed off with art. Actually, and that's why I gave it up. It wasn't. I wasn't just interested in sculpture or painting or film or music or, or dance or all sorts of things. Just this art thing kind of gets in the way for me. That's what gets up my nose completely. And people are making enormous amounts of money at it. And I'm not talking about artists, which you're doing, it's good luck to them, but it's a kind of huge, it's a huge kind of, when you start off being an artist, I want to be a sculptor actually. I'm a sculptor, I suppose. But, um, People say, are oh, you an artist? I think, oh, well, oh, I don't really feel like an artist. Most people think I'm the janitor, and, um, <laughs> which is all right. And um, I, I, no, I don't know. I'm just struggling with trying to make stuff mm. That, mm. that amuses me and maybe I'm, or amuse a few other people and trying to push... I, the, you know, I'm, I'm, kind of interested, I'm interested in the kind of what you're talking about, the virtual. I'm interested in the kind of thing that doesn't, you know, the, the, the pose thing or the conceptual thing. It was fantastic <laughs> until Lucy Lippard came along and then made a book called The Dematerialization of the Art Object. made a fucking great big fat book. And everyone went, oh dear, <laughs> what's this? Everyone was so cross about it. Nobody's cross about it now. Because, you know, Lucy L. Lippard, who was married to, who was married to um, Robert Ryman, who made oh, white paintings. Fantastic, beautiful white paintings. And he signed his name in yellow on the bottom. And you think, well, what the fuck's that all about? You know? So the, the whole of my life I've been confronted with kind of bullshit and crap by people pretending the same one thing and meaning another. Fine, get rid of the stuff, get rid of the galleries, get rid of all the galleries. The next thing is that Mike Heights are in, in the Nevada desert is, is really become a real estate because you just put a fence around the sort of a real estate. Cause it, it, uh, we are, we are, people who go to art school who call themselves artists should have the guts to say no thank you. And very, very few people say no thank you. I can name one person who said no thank you to somebody and she's not here tonight, I don't think, but <laughs> tough woman. No thank you. It's important to say that. There's too much crap around, you know. And it, we want the freedom to be able to you know, just move around. I was saying to David Thorpe earlier on that, that what is required are places like this to, to make a mess and just chaos and crap, which don't exist anymore. But you, you're suggesting this could be the place for that now, which I think is fantastic. Well, we, I like we chaos and crap as much as Test some there. things out, not be so <laughs> polite. We'd be imaginative, but not so polite about things. Okay. Uh, uh, can I stop now? You can stop, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So now, who would like to ask a question? <laughs> wow. Oh, yes, that's yeah, it's thing. a good painting. And he had a bit of a go at it. And he, he's an idle, sloppy, funny, acid, intelligent man, but a great artist. So what he, didn't, he made the work, is a, the work is only, I mean, is a vehicle for him to be able to be the artist. It's only a vehicle for so, him. So what's... A, a, a prop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist, there's my work there. I'm going down to the pub now and have you, you know, the oysters and some champagne. <laughs> that's where all, and then be rude to his friends and his enemies. And that's, what, that's where the thing was. That's, that was the work. Him. The same as people like Polka and all these people. They're great artists. Some of the work's great as well, but it's not always good. It's kind of like... The work's irrelevant somehow. The work's for the Satchis of this world to barter and make money out of. That's another matter. It doesn't interest a lot of people, really. 
So it's the lifestyle. It's, mm. it's the life. It's the, it's the life. Territory. It's not Terri the lifestyle, it's, it's the life, isn't it? Mm. It's the living. And it's a territory of things, which are kind of your life. And, and that's why the singular... I, think, I do think the singular object, is, it's hard to deal with. Mm. Gets in the way. Yeah, it does. Actually, really, you know, I've, I've, I've had a real revelation tonight. It's been really useful. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I feel a bit of a So, you said quite a lot about what it is for an artist to make a person, and a lot of your points seem to be about the value of painting is in the artist making it, or if there is a value or whatever, but. What's the value of people looking at paintings? And because I, is there a value of people looking at paintings? Mm. They go out into the world. That's why you make them. Should that be the reason that you make them? Should people see them? And is there still a value of people looking at them if we have such well, I was, access to imagery of all kinds, such free well, access I, to imagery? Well, I was trying to say something that it that, that it, that's in relation to the making. I mean, I was trying to say that earlier on, but it kind yeah. of it it sounded apparently too. Poetic or Radio Four, um, but it's um, but I mean I was trying I was trying to say that that that's why I think there's a lot of painting and there's a lot of art in the world, which is just the appearance of art and stylistic modes of art and whether, whatever yeah. it is, but actually the stuff that actually is interesting and this isn't just painting, this could be film or anything, um, is actually I think that when you actually have time with the thing, and that it's that the unfolding of it, the unwrapping of it, however you, I don't like the word reading, but um, the, the kind of that you that your that that should be absolutely the ambition of the work of art. I mean, that it actually is something which is, which has time to hold in it. That's part of the making. I agree, but I think that's that's still brings into question the problem of the object. There's only one of it, and it's as you, just what you just. But why is that? I mean, that's no different to painting, sculpture, film, no, it, photography. No, I just wondered if uh, how it's it's the site it's put in. <coughs> it's the, it's the looking. It's the, is that what you're talking mm, about? The looking. the looking. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, it's like. like like that passive gaze at some a thing. Well, we know the look. We know the difference between um, looking at a, a film on the television and going to the cinema. Yeah. And I think that's a, well, we all know that's a very big difference. Yeah, uh, it's just. And I think that I, th I think I'd hope that was a painting. A painting is an object that somebody has crafted with their hands. That is pigment on a, on a board of some kind, some sort of wet medium on some kind of ground. Just dirty um, old stuff, yeah. Why is it valuable to look at that? Does that hold up against looking at pixels on a screen? Choose your painting. Due to the, the, the craft of making it? Choose your painting. Of course it doesn't. If it, I mean, it could just be dirty old pigment on a board. Yeah. But, I mean, you're, you have the choice, don't you? Yeah. You know. I mean, if you go into the National Gallery... <coughs> I mean, what I'm saying is, OK, let's be trying to be classic here. If you go into the National Gallery, there's... You know, there's a room full of Madonnas and babies, but one of them is by Bellini, and it's funny how that's the one that's going to draw your attention, because it's that much better than the other ones. You work that one out. But I don't think we can talk about looking at paintings like without, kind of not historically, because if you're looking at, uh, say, an icon, it's got a completely different function to something else. It's not really a painting, even. It just happens to be painted. I mean, there are painted pictures. I think. But and there's there are, icons and icons, I mean... Yeah, but it has a kind of purpose and a function, and, and, but a different kind of function. So I, do, I think it's... So when you, look at a, if when you look at an icon, do you think, oh, I'm looking at an icon, so I appreciate it in this way, and I'm looking at an angra, so I appreciate it in that way? No, I mean, usually, I mean, I'm thinking, say, if you're looking at an icon in, um, in some kind of, in a church in... Sort of southern Italy or something, where you have all this kind of mad garish stuff. What I think is, isn't it amazing that it's kind of like a way of for certain people to be transported? And do I look at it like a weird object that looks like a bit of kind of strange, horrible thing, or do I look at and, and then I think, well, it's been used as a sort of like a drug for others. So it's it's to do with that, but but they have functions. So there, are, I mean, there are pictures that have functions and pictures that don't. I think pictures have functions. Sorry, can I just... Because I think the, the... Not the problem I have, but it's, it's this, this is what I was trying to kind of get to before in an argument, is it's... it's, it's I don't want to look at things. I want to be in them. Like, mm. I want to be in them. And I think that's, that's what I was trying to say before about sculpture being the more interesting field for me, because you can be in a sculpture, you know... 
So you don't have, have to just observe it. You don't have to just. So I mean, there's, there's something the, to being with a painting. I mean, I, you know, I appreciate that. I, I see, I'd, I'd still say that I could be with a painting as an object in the same way that I could be with a sculpture as an object. Well, it's but being with and being in. That's the distinction well, I, I was mean, trying to make. How do you find that, being physically inside a sculpture or being... I think you can physically be inside a sculpture in, now. In, in, in what way that you can't be in a painting? I mean, a painting's still an object in the same way that a sculpture is, unless the sculpture is an installation in which, which you can enter physically. Uh, have you got a problem with the, the sort of two-dimensionality of an image and the sort of illusion of an image, the fact that it challenges you to... No. No. No, so, it's so just... So how can you not... It's, it's, well, it's just... It's a space, isn't it? It's, it, it's a space that's opening, us, up, opening up to us now. I think, and there's a there's a kind of there's a social sculptural space that we can kind of be in, and control and, and kind of you know and make, and that's what kind of interests me now. Is it something to do with the difference between sort of act, action and reflection or something? Yeah, okay. I guess so. Mm. I guess I'm looking for a yeah, it's like an action, isn't it? I mean, someone said before about process, so that that would be the process that I'm interested in is kind of action. Mm. Of like being in these things, of being in these spaces that, that we could, as artists, we could create, you know, <coughs> for, so, for other people to live in. I, and, I, I and be. I'll just say, so why, why go see a painting when you could go be in a sculpture then? Well, that's kind and of the point of the discussion, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but okay. No, I didn't mean to be snotty, but I mean that's that's kind of <laughs> that's what we were trying to get at, isn't it? I don't know. To be honest, I mean, I like going and looking at a painting and, 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 and you know, being contemplative and all the rest of it, but, you know. Not for too long. Not for, I, I just think it, it, we could go somewhere else, you know. Okay. Mm. Well, thanks. It's time to go somewhere else. It's time to go somewhere else. I'm glad <laughs> Bruce is on this panel. <laughs> I, I, I mean that. I agree. I think you're absolutely right. I, I, I don't know where that is. That's what's quite interesting. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't know where yeah. it is. That's what's but, exciting. You know, we know what painting does. We've known that for a long time. That, you know, let's find out what this other stuff. Well, certainly the, does. certainly the sort of painting we've seen for the last. Well, there's maybe something yeah. else, uh, some other thing which you're talking about, which I'm quite interested in. I don't know what it is. No. Exactly. I find that quite challenging for me. Uh, great. So somebody here would like to ask. Hi, I just want to go back to the idea, just very quickly, that you talk about that you can't actually um, go into a painting or you can't be actively involved. I mean, I. I would actually argue yeah. that you can. I was pushing my luck there, um, I know when I said it. <laughs> and, I, and I just want to kind of uh, to put that out there. That I mean, and also the way, kind of, even in the area of kind of science, the, sort of the, the new ideas of brain plasticity and the way that the new ideas about how sensation works that are coming through means that we have a view of painting now as something potentially that you can almost physically become engaged in if you want to, I mean, it's your choice and, uh, you know, what you, you're activated by, that, I mean, even, and I mean, this is so much of it's speculation, but to the extent that the brain uh, changes its form in reaction to sensation, either permanently or temporarily, so you almost get this kind of uh, amazingly active system operating between the painting and the viewer. So... That's, that's another view. Right. <coughs> I, I, I haven't had that in front of a contemporary painting for quite a long time. You know, have, have you, Vanessa? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm just aware that there's something that, come that, that I wouldn't have said because I'm always a bit aware that I ramble on with some things that I really believe in. But I think what that, that question might also be is sort of, what is it you're thinking about when you're making paintings? And when, I'm think, when I actually would sort of start talking about things like phenomenology, um, most painters would know what that, that means because there is that relationship. There is, and that doesn't have to have a kind of new scientific knowledge. That's actually already in the canon. And I think that's actually incredibly important to our relationship with memory to do with touch, to do with colour, to do with all sorts of um, well, phenomen phenomenological experience. Which you know that this that takes it, but this that takes it to another level, which I um, I would be slightly wary of okay. heading at this point. Why? Well, because I think well, because well, I don't know. I mean, I th you know, I could rather laugh at, laugh with Bruce than get to. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, I, okay, no, there's no why about it. I suppose the point is that it actually talks about something which is actually much more, which is 
which is really very serious, I suppose. That's why. An audience, it's difficult to know what an audience wants. I like to be serious. Well, continue it. I'm not. But I'm going to put my foot in it there. Oh, dear. But there are sort of strategies of... of <laughs> there are strategies, you know, technical strategies. And, and I, I mean, Anna, this is probably maybe not the time or the place to talk about it, but there is... But there are things like, you know, just tech... It's a long conversation. Technical things that can be done with painting in, in the same way that with any other language. So you kind of... Everybody has linguistic tricks, in a sense. And those linguistic tricks are then, or, lang or languages, or kind of triggers. So you look at one painting, it makes you think of another in the same way, you know, that, that you look at a film and you use certain, certain languages. That, in a sense, painting is just as technical as other technological devices, and so effect becomes technical. I don't know. Well, that's technique. That might be yeah, quite good. I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, that might also go along with... When you say you, know, you want to be serious... Yeah, I want to know what the serious, serious point is, yeah. All oh, right, I, I knew I'd be putting my foot in it when I started that one. I mean, because I think, I suppose I, I really, I mean, as a, one of the people on this, I really care about where painting goes. I think it's still got a long way to go. I probably agree with you. There is well, something I, out there we don't even, haven't even I think been to. A, I, just, I sort of lie when it says, but, but I'm also interested in other things as well. But I, I, but I also feel that a lot of stuff has been done and I'm waiting to see it. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm people just, have been making stuff already, I'm not myself. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to make it myself. I'm just very wary, and it's not a criticism of you, because I think you're very much... I was a therapist. Right it is, by the way. You know um, no, I'm just very wary, not, 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 because I said very early on, I think you're doing something which is a reflection of the world in a different way to the one I'm interested in, but I'm glad you're doing it. But I'm also very wary that actually um, this idea that there's going to be, there is something out there that we could, we could have, which is a virtual thing. Yeah, I I'm understand it. I understand this thing about the, sort of the lump and mass of art, and, but I think that sculpture, painting, you know, everything needs storage. You know, but I do actually also think that the notion that there's something where we're going to find another technology that's going to answer the question yeah. or, or do deal with it, I'm just thinking, well, it hasn't yet in film. I mean, film has definitely no. not made it yet. No, but I, so I'm, if it I'm, hasn't in film, where, what are we looking, what are we well, waiting I'm, for? I, you, know? you know, I'm very wary about what I say. I mean, I, and I, you know, and I'm, I'm anxious and I'm ambivalent about what I say, but at the same time, I, I see that if I don't follow that, then all I can do is become retrenched. All I can do is retreat. Mm. Mm. And that's what kind of painting now to me seems to be. It seems to be a retreat, mm. you know. I might think it's realism. And I, well, it might be, it might be <laughs> realism, but I, you know, I still believe that art can move I think if you're a painter, you'd be forward. in retreat. If you're not a painter, you're not in retreat. Yeah, that's, that's, that, yeah. There's somebody here is burning to ask a question. <coughs> and I don't mean I, your paint, I really don't. I, I mean, uh, I think it's been talked about, but um, for me, I think a lot of the criticism that we've, we've been talking about in terms of the trouble with painting has been focusing on um, the painting as an object in its singularity, rather than as being a kind of an object um, within a, a body of work of an artist. And a lot of the interest that comes from, from seeing that piece is through its contextualization with other pieces in a body of work. Um, and I think that's interesting in, in also in terms of how you're talking about the virtual and, and, and the idea of the virtual kind of questioning that um, the idea of the appreciation of the work comes in the gap between two pieces of, of work by a similar artist, by, by, sorry, by the same artist. Um, and also now um, artists are, are using sort of multiple disciplines like sculpture, video and, and painting or whatever. And, and that's a much stronger sort of agent of, of creating that, the kind of the feeling of of what you get in the gap between the objects and the appreciation that comes in that. <laughs> Is that a, was that a question or a, or a, a statement? Well, I, I was just wondering what you think about that. Do you, do you agree or do you disagree? Or? That's the question of this territory, you know, which is the same, I think, that thing of Francis Bacon being a good artist and a bad painter. I mean, I'd sort of disagree, but... but um, but it's, you're talking about a kind of territory where you don't see anything in isolation in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you hardly yeah. ever look at a piece of someone's work in isolation. Yeah, that's you think what I'm of it of them. Yeah. You think of the kind of the, this, this zone in which they are. And, and the more you like the zone, the more you're interested in the single thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. But it also becomes like a kind of backstory these days, doesn't it? It becomes a kind of. It becomes a story, doesn't it, as well? Do you know what I mean? A story. 
Well, like, you know, it might be a painter from some once kind of mm -hmm. obscure backwater who's now kind of, you know, I don't know, it becomes a narrative, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. And that narrative seems to have overtaken that, that kind of idea of the, the contextualization. Mm. Yeah. It's more, you know, yeah. we're interested in the personality of the painter and their own kind of, you know, uh -huh. absolutely, yeah. particular background. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I mean, this, this is very ideali idealised thinking, but, you know, my, I mean, I, you know, I, I want to become anonymous. That's, mm. what, that's ultimately what I'd want. And I think that's the most interesting place you could make art from, is just to disappear. Mm. Well, I'd agree with that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's kind of, I guess what you're talking about in a way is like, is like the canon, isn't it? It's, it's like, it's, it's, it's where you fit in that. Mm -hmm. And if that work kind of becomes a body of work that then can be placed and historicised and all the rest of it, and it's like, you know, they, these are the problems we are. This is again where it becomes too... It just becomes this lumpen thing again. It just becomes this weight. But I don't think that's different for artists, is it? I mean, for painters, sorry. I think no, that's, that's I think, the same. I, think no. the, I mean, there are some painters whose trajectory of their life goes out in front of them. This is, but there are lots that don't. This is the trouble, yeah. with, it's the trouble with art, it, like Bruce said at the beginning. But society wants that, and that's different. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not just painting, no. But I think part of what that question was about was also part, perhaps, to do with the fact that there are lots of... I mean, we started off by this, um, but there are lots of artists who, who don't want to see themselves within a territory either, which I think is completely understandable. They don't actually want to be seen as painters or sculptors, or they're doing lots of different, they're doing lots of different things at the same time. I think a lot of, paint, that's I think a lot of painters yeah. did that at one point. I think they still are. They kind of they kind of hid out in painting, and yeah. then, and then yeah. got yeah. kind of discovered again. But I mean, well. yeah, but you look at the great artists of the world. I, mean, I think Matisse is a better sculptor than a painter, actually. I, think I prefer the sculpture to the paintings. If you want to know, he's an artist. I think he's a fantastic sculptor. But he's not a senior, you know. I seem to have got the microphone. Um, I can't quite believe we haven't... What, what's, I was just trying to think of some artists who are painters and try and remember the sense of excitement and ambition about their work. And so I've come up with Gerhard Richter, Kerry James Marshall, Gary Hume. With all of them, Mark, I think they kind of disappear because right. they create an object that kind of belongs to the world, because that's why they're great artists. And in all of them, I think they absolutely use a very particular space with a particular history, but to say something relevant about the present. And I kind of think, I mean, it's a great discussion, it's very sparky, but I think painting absolutely can still be a site for ambition. You do slightly search around to think of hundreds of names, it's true, because... Artists are making. I'm already with struggling all kinds with Gary things. Hume, to be but honest. But I think some of these artists. <laughs> but, but these artists, when I think of some of Gary's kind of blankest, dumbest works, I mean they are almost sculptures. I think they absolutely at the heart of kind of what art is and what it can be. Kerry James Marshall, you know, brought up just staring at white faces on canvases and decided that he really needed to change that and did it beautifully and cleverly and smartly. And Gerhard Richter where it's kind of like another image of the world and it's kind of there and not there. There's something rather extraordinary going on. And I think the other thing is it's a myth, and you've kind of alluded to, to it as a panel, the idea that there aren't sort of limits to all kinds of art and all kinds of forms of art. The idea that somehow if you move into installation or you move into film, you've sort of freed yourself. It's kind of rubbish, actually. There's always limits, either imposed by others or imposed by artists themselves. It's a question with what, what you do within those particular perimeters and particular limits. So um, uh, it's really a comment. So yeah, I think art. Well, I guess, I guess, the, I, guess the, I guess the argument, I guess the argument tonight was how limiting is that could have been rephrased that way, couldn't it? How limiting is painting? I mean, that's kind of what we've been talking about. Obviously, all art's limiting, but that's the question: is whether art limits more than, and it limits outside of itself, you know? And I think the thing with you know, you talk about Richter. I mean, Richter to me is the last painter who kind of dealt with these kind of issues, you know. That's a long time ago. Well, not Richter's, but Polka, you know. It's a long time ago, I think. He only died last year, Polka, Richter's still around. Yeah, but, you know, they kicked off in the 60s, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a while ago since someone really engaged with kind of that. I, dealing with these kind of surface issues and what painting can do and what painting is and what its kind of status is and its kind of anxiety about itself, you know, and that anxiety's carried on and carried on and it just becomes quite, you know, I just find a lot of painting I look at, I just find it neurotic and not, and you know, 
And because that anxiety is just seeped right in there. And that's what that's what I'd say is a limit on it, you know. And it just needs to kind of I don't know. Well, I mean there's still a, there's an argument that painting should get more neurotic and that could be even more interesting, you know what I mean? And I guess I guess you get someone like William Sassner or something, and that's kinda it's pretty neurotic painting, isn't it? But like, you know, full of doubt and all the rest of it. What's this revelation you've had? What's this revelation you've had? What's that? The revelation you've had. You said you've had... Oh, no, just the revelation, just about thinking about the broader sense, because I think that this is the other thing, you know, the kind of... The, ha the revelation was just a general feeling of... Um, actually, a bit of freedom. I actually experienced, right. you know, a, a kind of a slight freedom of possibility. Actually, I just got a, quite optimistic... <laughs> you know, I, did, I, I feel quite optimistic actually, because, and I feel optimistic because of, of kind of also a, a, about a kind of um, you know not thinking too much about um, a kind of order of things because this is I mean this is I'm moving away from from the, the optimistic revelation, but something also about this notion of the great artist is something of what is great art and the successful painter and the great painter. And, and I think that's also kind of so complicated now. And actually, there are so many more artists now, just proportionally, which I do think changes the kind of register of how we look at work because of, of this ridiculous amount of art that, that's everywhere. And, the ridic you know, how many art schools are there in England? It's insane. Well, there's no, there's no more art schools than there were are before. There no, but there's more art. And more, there's more people being artists now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. And I think that this changes, it, it, whether, that's again not a qualitative judgment, it's neither good nor bad, but it certainly changes kind of the structure of it to some degree, I think. And, mm. Well, what's happening now has become very, it's very acceptable, it's quite acceptable to be uh, an artist now, it seems. And that's your thing about acceptance of being well, an artist? Well, I mean, it was quite diffi more difficult in the past, and I mean, there's a lot more uh, women, uh, uh, most of the more interesting artists actually now, I think, are women, actually. But I would never have imagined that would have been the case when I went to art school because mm -hmm. the, the, the only two or three of, of, of the women in the, when I was in 1961 when I first went stuck at it really because of all sorts of pressures at the time and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just completely different, which is good. I mean, I think it's bad. But I just think we have. I think that there's. A, I think there's the, the, the kind of like. I think. That, I think that people should continue to paint and do all this, everything. They should do all these things, but I think, but why they're doing it, they should be thinking about what it's for. And does it have to have a, you know, what's the purpose of it? And what, what, what is, and where is it going to be seen? And where is it going to go? You know, what kind of place is it going to be seen in? And what I find quite problematic is that nothing, you know, the, the revolution in the art schools is the same, at the same time as the revolution of conceptual art happened. And after the revolution, in the art schools, um, in the in the late sixties, um, it it changed the art schools. It was like, oh, we've had the revolution. Now clamp down. Yeah. Now you have to fight, sit, fill the tick this. And that's when this, that's when that started after the revolution. So you begin to wonder if the revolution wasn't whipped up by somebody to have a revolution. You you wonder what the whole thing's about. So you wonder why there's so many people being artists now and called artists. You think. Is this another plot? You wonder what happened to cybernetic serendipity. You wonder what happened to cybernetic. You wonder what happened to the, all that stuff. That all was all swept under the carpet. <laughs> and also was, conceptual art was swept under the carpet for a number of years until um, it surfaced again uh, at Gorsa's. And I think it was kind of touching the max factors there. Because um, <laughs> many conceptualism was kind of the second division. But the, there's kind of a... Um, the, 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 the thing we're going to be wary of is actually why we're all artists and what the problems of it all is. And it's, it's not just as straightforward as getting it up a canvas, it's tossing on some paint and standing back and looking at it and admiring it. There's other forces at bay. I tell you, be, be, be attention. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody who would like to ask. Would you like to ask your question? Well, uh, I think it's been slightly superseded, but. Um, it was to go back to your point that you'd like to get out of the picture in a way and, and take yourself out of it and be anonymous. And for me, that's sort of hit on what I imagine to be the way forward with painting in some way, shape or form. Um, and, and really, that I was just going to ask about that, but it seems to have moved on from that. But also to add that I wonder... I mean, I've just come to art quite lately and 
I didn't really know anything about the art world, but I'm, I was really appalled, actually, at how much I was pushed towards sort of making a statement about what I was going to be in terms of the painting that I was trying to make or what I wanted to do, what was my message. And in fact, I don't have one. I mean, it's, it's more about looking at art in the world in a, in a greater kind of sort of wider vision. I, I don't think anybody's really interested in the sort of insecurities of my life on canvas, um, particularly. Um, and, and I'm wondering whether that relates to what you're saying or, or not. I don't, I don't really know. Can I just answer something? And it's actually not, an, a, a, it doesn't really relate to the question, but as you were speaking, I thought of something when you started to talk about life on canvas. I think one of the most interesting things about art and talking about this is everyone's talking at cross purposes, actually. And I, I really do, because cause in some way, there is a massive amount of cross purposes. And, it's just, and I think that's one of the most fascinating things also about kind of teaching, which I do, is that you have to somehow negotiate all the constant cross-purposes that everyone, like everyone's speaking in sort of Tower of Babel tongues, but with unified subjects. So you go to this unified subject area with everybody speaking like completely like kind of the, the theatre of the insane. And I think, that's, that, I think that's really interesting, that absolute kind of, and maybe that's the sort of dissipation of the subject in some ways, which is, <laughs> the speaking in tongues problem. But also, but your point is that that, that point of um, entering into making art and this idea that it's got to be somehow self-reflective and all about your life and all about your existence, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, that is, that seems to have been, that may be one of the painting's worst problems, which is always, it's always there, it's always like, it was this thing where you can express yourself and then it's you. And I, I, I don't know, you know, that, that's it actually probably, ha that probably happened sometime in the 1950s or something. I don't know when it, where it comes from. It wasn't there before and it, it really shouldn't be there now. Well, it's, you know. The question I'm getting from it is, is, is a push towards it because that's what the art schools are looking for. Mm, but I think it's because, because they're worried that you don't have something called subject matter. But isn't it you know, and I think that's te terribly sad because, you, you, of course, the world is your subject, not you. Yeah, sorry. Isn't it because painting kind of, uh, so, you know... The touchy-feely bit. Well, it's, it, it's, you know, it's paint, painting kind of came out of existential man, didn't it? Yeah, but, I mean, you know, it's only in a very small... There's only a very small period of painting's existence where that sort of idea I was think, really I think given. drawings were interesting. I think drawing's okay. great. No, really, okay. I'm serious. I think yeah, let's talk about drawing. We can all agree on that one. OK, well, we'll have... Yeah, we'll do the trouble with drawing one of these fine days. And no, there's no, there's no trouble, there's no trouble, there's no trouble, there's no trouble, there's no trouble with drawing. With drawing. No. It's, it's really, yeah, it's, it's cheap, simple. you can keep it in a notebook, it doesn't take like so much space. Everyone exactly. draws, universal language. Yeah. I'm afraid we have to make way for the uh, cinema audience who will be coming in here. What's on? After I, the actually, trouble with cinema. Yeah, yeah, the trouble with cinema. cinema. <laughs> 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 I wish I hadn't asked for that question. No, you're really turning them over, aren't you? Yeah, we're <laughs> what's that, what's on getting tonight? them in, getting them out. That's the, what's on tonight? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the tickets are available at the box office. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd like to thank everybody up here on the stage.